Everybody gotta eat. We're gonna do it right this time. This I show y'all, and don't forget, everybody, everybody gotta, gotta eat. eat. <laughs> so gotta eat. Yum. Yum. <laughs> yeah. We are back live with Everybody Gotta Eat. Another episode. I am your host, Great. I'm Layla. And I'm Isaiah Zay. And my special guest. Chris Massey, what's up? We got Chris Massey in the building. Yes, sir. Chris, man, how you been, man? How you living? Chilling, man. Glad to be back home in Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? Just lit. Yeah. yeah. City's always been good to be back. Oh, yeah. Man. Especially in the summertime. Especially in the summertime. I don't know. It's dress season. Yes. Dress season. Sun's out, buns out. I didn't even know you were from Atlanta. Yeah, because um, yeah, I don't know if you remember, but we met a couple months ago at Lennox, yeah. and we was talking about um, you went to Riverdale yeah. and all that. Like, yeah. I didn't even know. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, you a Atlanta native. Yeah, Southside, 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 Come back home, see family, friends, uh, and now you know Atlanta's so booming with the movie and television side. Now it's like we really sort of kind of can work here yeah, more so right. than there now. So it's kind of cool. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Yeah. So get into it, man. We we gonna we gonna get straight into it. We're not even gonna play with you. Mm -hmm. These questions right here are some of the toughest questions you yeah, ever. Toughest questions. They're not even tough. They just they make you think. <laughs> Okay. Eat these questions. Eat these questions. Eat these you got to eat these questions, man. You ready? You gonna start off? Uh, we go this way. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, if you only got one eye, okay, I'm ready. If you only got one eye, is 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 you blinking or is you winking? Like, is it considered to be blinking or or winking? I mean, it would be considered winking, but I'll be winking. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 yeah, I'm like, you know what I'm saying? I, I make it look a little good. Like, what's up? You know what I mean? <laughs> he told me, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> you know? Okay, okay. So, um, dang, what was that? Okay. So, what is something that sounds like a compliment but it's actually an insult? Hmm. This could be anything. Boy, you've been eating, boy. <laughs> Now, but 
you know? Mm, that's a good question. That's a good question. Let uh, back on it. Let it it's for sure going to be a dance, some dance, but I mean, I'm trying to think of like some some stuff that people do right now. Oh, probably those, um, maybe them like those little hoverboards. Yeah. Because them like kind of died down yeah. a little bit. Like, people, people was getting on the highway with them and stuff. Like, people was really yeah, trying to go places. Yeah, people was going crazy. Man. Man. Look, he, he got That's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro. Oh, man. Man, oh, my brother used to go every time. Man, that's good. Yeah, that's yeah. Good. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
class at school, whatever. Mm -hmm. So I played like saxophone, um, and then when I got a little bit older, I was playing a piano. But I was self-taught with the piano, but uh, the saxophone, you know, I went to, when I was in elementary school, they had like music programs, so like right. band or whatever. <clears throat> so I was a part of that. That's kind of where I learned the notes and stuff, but it never really stuck to me on, as far as like reading music. Mm -hmm. But I compose my own music now on the piano and like, okay. saxophone and stuff like that, but um, it's just all off ear. But yeah, I've been doing that since I was about seven, eight, something like that. <clears throat> seven, eight. Wow, so was that before the acting or yeah, was that? Yeah, that was way before. Wow, so yeah, you know, music. Music. yeah, for wow. all the time. And then, and then when we got, you know, doing our shows and stuff like that, like, it helped me to be able to afford studio equipment and stuff like that. So I built a studio in my room when I was like Smart 15, 14, 15, something like that. And um, so it used to be like me and my cousins, um, my cousin Drano, my brother Kyle, and my cousin Jonathan. We would just sit in there all day long, like during the summertime, and just mm -hmm. cook up, you know, just make songs, like random songs. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just random. I actually, yeah, I taught myself how to use Pro Tools, um, all that, just from buying it, you know what I'm saying? Like, just having it in my room every day. And I, I begged my dad to buy me a, um, a beat machine. It was an MPC 2500, the uh, Akai. Mm -hmm. And then, so I was making beats. Recording myself, engineering ourselves, everything in my room. You know what I'm saying? So we got like, I mean, we, we probably did like over 50, 60 songs just in the house that never got released. You know what I mean? Just, wow. just, just sitting. It be like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, it was cool because now I look back on it as it helped me to get where I'm at now because right. when it comes to the music side, I know way more about the technical side of things uh, than I would if I was just an artist. Yeah. You know, or just someone that was right. Science music. to the nigga. Yeah, you know, so I can't, when someone tells me like, oh, I can't do this, I can't do this, I'm, I'm looking at my like, bro, yes, you can, bro. It's just, hold on, it's right here. Like, you know, because some engineers will try to finesse a little bit, like, oh, bro. It's so hard. It's so hard to do this. And you're like, bro, like, I, I'm, I know I'm the artist today, but like I know how to engineer. Like, yeah, don't man. try to finesse me where you can't find this EQ or you can't find this. Like, I'll help you find it. Yeah, you know, right. right. Man, <laughs> man, when I got my preset all already done, like, all you do is press record. That's it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. yeah. yeah that's real. Because, I, I mean, Pro Tools is by far probably one of the most complicated things, but when you grew up, just trial and error, like me and we were recording ourselves and Freelance. we would do, oh yeah, free <laughs> Classic. Bro, you know what used to be so hard too was Reasons. Yeah. Reasons used to be like so difficult, but I, used, I ended up earning that too, but I don't, I don't use it anymore. But, yeah. Um, Pro Tools was one of those things, bro, that we grew up, it was just trial and error, you know, yeah. just like recording, figuring out buses and all these you. ins and outs and not really knowing what we were doing, we were just young. You right. know what I mean? And that was before you could just look up everything on YouTube. Because <laughs> if we had that when we was 15, yeah, 14, we would have been booming. <laughs> hey. Hey, hey, look, so, so it's something that's like, it's a talk around town, right? Hmm? Who invented drip? Well, you know, I'm king dripping right here. Because you know? <laughs> in the video, when, when you said that in Zoe 1-1, like, yeah. uh, what, what, uh, what was your exact line? Uh, well, it was, I mean, the, first off, just to clarify this for anybody out there that want to know, the episode is called Dripping. So there's no, there's, there's no, like, if you can find me one rapper before 2006 that was saying Dripping, like, this oh, is no, Dripping, no. this is Dripping, anything Dripping, oh then, wow. then I'm good. Like, then you got it. But until then, no, I'm Dripping. <laughs> Clip that he's talking about, like, I'm gonna, like, I'm gonna, like, I'm gonna play it here. Boom. Yes. That's fine. And the whole episode is called Dripping. So, like, it, it really, honestly, what you should do, <laughs> a lot of people have been playing clips. You should just find every clip where, because even in the episode, we talked about how I started the Dripping word, but they were talking about no one's gonna say Dripping, no one's gonna ever say this. Wow. And, and then they're talking about at the end of the episode, we predicted everything that was gonna happen where everyone's like, you didn't create Dripping. Everyone's been saying dripping, you know what I mean? But it was like one of those things where I didn't get the credit for starting it, even on the show. 
Yeah. <laughs> so, so <laughs> it show like, really, yeah, yeah, we we was predicting the fact that I was gonna create a slang word, and we was predicting that I wasn't gonna get credit for it. So I was like, a two in one deal. Yeah, but wow. it was, yeah, it was cool though because I remember we were filming that episode. We were like, no one's ever gonna say this. Right, like, and look at it now. We nobody's ever gonna say it. it. Literally, we got, <laughs> you, got, you got albums with dripping in it. You got songs. You got like, it's crazy. Big drill. Big drill. How did you get on Zoe 101? Uh, audition. Uh, me and my brother, uh, we moved out to LA. We were like, I was nine. I was like nine or ten, something like that. And then um, my mom and dad, we all went out. Me, and my mom, dad, and brother went to LA. My dad gave us like six months. Cause my mom was like, well they wanna be, you know, they wanna do it. And our agent was saying they should go to LA if they wanna pursue it and get some stuff. So my dad was like, all right, we got six months. If y'all don't get shit then, we're going back home. Like, so we Which went out here. there. Huh? Atlanta. Atlanta. Atlanta, yeah, coming back home to Atlanta. Okay. And um, so he gave us like six months. We went out there, got an apartment, and was going on auditions, and I got like, I think I got a McDonald's commercial and like a Kodak commercial, or something like that. And, and then after that, you know, we kind of like, okay, boom, a little bit of, you know what I'm saying, income coming in. So my dad was like, yeah, hey, I'll stay out here a little bit longer. And then we were on our way, that like towards the end of the six months, we were um, about to come back and I got Lion King, um, the, the Broadway in LA. So mm -hmm. there was a stage. And I didn't even want to audition for it originally. I told my mom, like, I'm not for audition. I don't want to be on the play. Like, you know, right. Because right. yeah. I was a kid, I just always thought like plays were just like ballet. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? <laughs> so, and then uh, I ended up getting the job because I think every kid knows every song to the Lion King. Yeah, it's like course. impossible for you to not know every word. So, right. so I went in there and I sang it. Now you know how to sing, but like I did, I still did music, so I know my notes and stuff like that. But I also really thank the Lion King production too for a lot of my music success because a lot of them were great musicians. I mean, we had Tim Rice, Elton John, um, wow. like those are people who wrote the whole, yeah. you know, what I mean, the whole soundtrack. So we got a chance to be with uh, a live orchestra every single day. That was some of the most talented people in the world, and a lot of vocal lessons and stuff like that while we were there as a kid. And it was stuff that I didn't want to do, but then when I grew up, I still be in the studio using some of the same vocal lessons that I learned when I was nine years old, ten right. years old. Wow. So it's like that stuff you retain without even knowing you're retaining it. And so when you say vocal lessons, are they taught you how to sing or like? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, because we it was every night. So uh, when we did the Lion King, it was uh, shit. We did every night except Monday nights. Wow. So, and then Saturday and Sunday was two nights, but it would be an alternate. So we always had two symbols and two dollars or whatever. But uh, I did that for a year, and then my brother got that Serena, and then that was Corey. Oh, hey, brother, hold on. Hell no. Yeah, that's my little brother, Corey. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Corey from that is your brother. <laughs> <laughs> they put the line. What? What? That's crazy. Yeah. Hell that's no. Crazy. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. We both, yeah. And you know, that was going to my follow up question. I was like, so I see your brother had a big influence to a lot of stuff that you did because you guys were always together. So that was going to be one of my oldest? Me. You. Okay. Mm -hmm. What? Yeah. yeah, it's crazy. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So then that happened. Then my brother got that Serena. He was like 10 or something like that. Corey. Like 9 or 10. <laughs> wow. First season. Yeah. And then while he was during, uh, while he was filming uh, that Serena, like I think like the second or third season. I went to audition for Zoe 101, mm -hmm. and then we became, yeah, the first, we're well, actually the first siblings to ever be nominated for Emmys Ooh. in separate TV shows in the same category, because every other sibling normally is on the same show. Right. Know, like all the, the uh, Olsen twins, uh, uh, and Zach and Cody, Zach and Cody, they're all on the same show, so me and my brother were actually nominated for an Emmy on his show, that's a Raven, and then my show, Zoe. So we became the first, and we didn't even know that, but we also became the first two to lose at the same time. You went so high. You went so high. That was cool. Who beat you? Who 
was better than that so right? It was right. Who was better than that? You know what it was though? It, it's so messed up because they put the children's um, television programming was uh, they put us in there with uh, oh my god, I'm about to remember her name right now. I had it right before you said that. Um, her name was. Um, That's the Raven Zoe 101. Was it on Disney? No, she was the she was the educational lady. Molly? No. It on was, on uh, Nickelodeon. Yeah, on like Noggin or something like that. It was like. It yeah. was, oh my God! I just had it. That that wild. Susie something or something like that. No. Um, wild Donner. No, 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 no. It was like an actual <laughs> show. It was a. Uh, it was the educational lady. I, oh my god. I, I, I think it's in my door, like... No, 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 it was like a... She was to speak... Yeah, it was white lady. She used to speak and like... It was on Noggin. It was... Oh my god, her name was... Um, I, uh, you know the name of the show? I'm about to look at her right now, because it's... it's yeah, too. Uh, <laughs> what? What was education on Nickelodeon? It was on Noggin. It was like a oh. show that I met Susan. So I made Susie. What's a girl with a clock? Oh, a girl with a clock? The lady on the floor with you. That was that's why I said Molly. Oh. Molly on the big couch. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um not thinking. Watch it be some something I even never seen. Oh yeah, it's, like, it's, like, it's like, for sure something you never seen. But she won every time. <laughs> what? She, He's gonna be like, I remember that shit. Right. <laughs> Like, when I tell you, I was literally about to say her name before you asked me something else, and then I lost it. And I'm like, it is bothering me right now because I, I see it in my head. Her name was like Linda Ellerby. Linda Ellerby. Linda Ellerby. And That's like, her name. what's the name of her show? What was the name of her? Something. Something that I bet you none of us watched. Yeah, bro. <laughs> It was, that's what I don't even have a card anymore. Hold on, let me look her up now. Linda Ellerby. I'm gonna look up her name. Linda. Wow. Oh, Nick News. Nick News. That was Nick wild. News with Linda Ellerby. Yes, that right there. Oh. But it was like on Nick I remember seeing it with her. Yeah, it used to just be kind of on. Like, it was like one of those shows. I remember seeing it. Yes. And You're she, right. She it's used to win one. like every. She has like, I don't even know how many games. But yeah, it was me. Uh, on that that year, we were all nominated. It was like me um, and Zoe 101, my brother, that's a Raven, and I think Sweet Life of Zach and Cody were all against her, and like Dora the Explorer or something. And she won. I don't know if she beat Dora. How does she beat Dora? She beat because she beat everything that she does is like educational and like. So like, they always play the preschool uh, every day. Yeah, but it's, it's gonna, I mean, you're gonna automatically win when you're doing educational stuff. Yeah. It's like. I mean, because our show wasn't really educational. Like, she's teaching kids about like finance and like loving each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, You're right. You can't like, beat the cake. Real life, <laughs> yeah. teenage real life situation exactly. versus finances. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like teaching you how to be a better person, as a human. And, like, yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like we can't win against that. Like, <laughs> we over here, like, we over here like sliming each other. And, like, <laughs> Right. Like, I was like, I don't know about you, but I had a big crush on Zoe. <laughs> I mean, like, I don't know why I did, but now... She was like the blonde, like this. Yeah. Oh, like, 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 for some reason, like, she was like my dream girl, like, um... I, yeah, I can see that. Like, could you see yourself acting with, with, with like, the same cast again, like, in the movie or something? Oh, yeah, yeah, I talked to them, um, I talked to everybody individually, um, you know, Mm -hmm. You know, um, I'm still trying to get everyone together again. It's just hard because everybody live in different cities and right. everybody doing different stuff. So it's it's a lot harder than it it seems. Then it, then you know, it is, it's, say. but I, I definitely keep in contact with them because you know my fans alone will remind me every day. Like, hey, have you talked to Victoria? Hey, have you talked to? Her? You know and I and I see all that stuff on my Instagram or like my Twitter, and I'll be like, damn, let me call Victoria. Yeah, let me call Sean and see what he's doing. But yeah, no, they all, everybody. Jamie Lynn, I just uh, talked to her not too long ago. And everybody's just doing good. Jamie Lynn's doing uh, music, oh, wow. as well, country music. She's won some country music awards. Shout out to Jamie Lynn. Shout out to Jamie. <laughs> I didn't even know she did um, music. Yeah, wow. yeah. What's her name again? Jamie Lynn. Oh, damn. Yeah. So, 
So like with your music and stuff, you said just come out with another album. Yeah. Like, what's the, up with that? <clears throat> so the first album I just dropped was called King Dripper. Make sure you go check it out. Uh, <laughs> it's all uh, right. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's all right. right. I got a song on my single on there, Michael Dripping Like Jordan, you know what I mean? Yeah. I got it where I talk about, you know, I address the fact that, you know, they stole my line, they stole Dripping. Yeah. But it's cool. <laughs> I you know? <laughs> yeah, I heard it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but um, but uh, so my second album, the first one was more like just to kind of get people's attention, you mm -hmm. know, because like I, I make every genre of music, right? So um, we have done songs with Megan Trainer, my brother and I, um, everyone from Afrojack to uh, French Montana, I mean, a lot of, you know, people, Ray Shrimmer. Um, but my main thing is I do every genre of music, right? R&B, pop, EDM. What's your go-to? Um, well, I'm from the South Side, so I like the rap shit. Okay. <laughs> just try, try, try. <laughs> I mean, that's just a part of Culture, us, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So it's like, I love that, but I also grew up listening to a lot of old music, so I make even soul music. Like, I have a, one song where I kind of went on like, some oldest red, like, you know, type. Yeah. way out, uh, Ray Charles, you know what I'm saying, type of, okay. and I, and I, I love doing that as well, mm -hmm. but my go-to normally is like put on some some trap beats. And that's yeah, that's right. right. But when it comes to like really making some good music or trying to produce something that I'm trying to either sell to somebody or put on someone else's album, like I make sure I go hard in whatever way that is too. What's the producer that you want to collaborate with? Your favorite, existing or past? Um. Well, I got a shout out to my boy Backpack Miller who. Produces pretty much all my stuff. <clears throat> he grew up on the south side with me. We all went to elementary school together. So what's his name? Backpack. Backpack. You know, he uh, he did uh, Rolly. How do you know? Oh yeah 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 yeah. I was like, like that 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 yeah. yeah. Whenever you hear that, what's in that bag, boy? That's, that's <laughs> yeah. I was yeah. Backpack. Yeah, that was, yeah. Backpack. Yeah. That was, yeah. That was uh, him uh, featuring my boy Bless. Yeah, 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 Bless. Hell yeah, yeah. yeah. He got Bless is hard too. Yeah, Bless is hard. And he a good dude. Yeah, he's like super he's, positive. He's, yeah, he's, hella positive. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Bless. Oh, yeah, yeah, he's yeah, so yeah. Like, super positive. Yeah, for real. Peace, kid. Yeah, exactly. For real. And there'd be more people like that. Yeah, <laughs> man, I love Bless. Like, yeah, bro. Shout out to Bless too, for sure, for sure. I mean, it's good that you're like versatile in your music, though, because, you know, I mean, it's good, like you say, your friends outside, it's good to, you know, stick to rap, whatever, but also, you can switch it up and be like, oh, no, I do this too, yeah. like, that's more... Yeah, because that's what I was getting to about the first album, like, I really wanted to just kind of, like, capture everyone's attention, like, oh, shit, I didn't know you did music, oh, this right. is crazy, and then, now that I got people ready for another song, or another album, I'm going to really kind of put some, like, sauce on it, be like, okay, look, this is like the music that I actually do. Like, I right. did this, this was fun. But I want to show you, like, I'm it's a musician. Yeah. You know? Because that's my main thing is, like, I tell people, like, I'm a musician. Like, when they say, like, oh, because it's so funny. A lot of people, you know, as soon as you say, like, oh, you do music, first thing they say is, oh, you rap. You know what I mean? Right. And I'm like, yeah. I'm like, I do, but, like, I'm a musician and I, I try mm -hmm. my hardest to let people know, like, I'm. I don't ever want to be categorized as like, oh, I'm just a rapper or right. I'm just a singer or whatever. Because I honestly can give you a country song, I can give you an EDM song, I can give you a pop song, an R&B song, a trap song, a love song, whatever song I feel. And, and, it's, and it's weird because I'm not one of those people who allows myself to be just one thing. Like a lot of people have to stick with their lane. You know, right. they got to be like, okay, well, you're talking about this. You gotta always talk about this, you can't really switch it up. But for me, I kind of want to be one of those musicians that's like, look, I I want to drop a, a strip, strip club song for you one day, and then I'll drop a love song for you tomorrow, and like, like drop a, you know what I'm saying? Like, because I feel like there's no reason for me not to. When I put on music, I hear what I like to hear, and like, you know, if I hear something that sounds cool, some old school funky music, I'll jam out. Like, I got a song, uh, Called Till They Close It Down that I did that has a um, shout out to my boy um, Mitchell Hauser and uh, Alex who gave me a full fledged um, like orchestra basically around my, um, my my track that I did where they, they composed 
he like live music with horns and trombones and like so you know we'll go in and we'll we'll structure something one way and then I'll have my people like Mitch Bowser, I don't know since I was like 17 or 16 and he will go in with his guys and they like he's really funny he like Rick Rubin almost like long hair long beard but like he walk around the studio with his like socks and shoes off you know what I mean? <laughs> but, but like he will he will sit in there and be like oh yeah man just let's give me a little album you know what I'm saying just we're gonna get something nice you come back and it's just like wow. full horns you know what I'm saying trombones trumpets and cellos and violins and like he's he's amazing i mean like he gotta be comfortable to get his best work so i mean like take your shoes off <laughs> that's how um steve jobs was yeah 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 that's what he does he just he's one of those guys who just has his dog in the studio and but <laughs> but that's the thing like some days i can work with someone like him and be like i'm gonna just lock in with you you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying get some really cool off the wall stuff that nobody's ever heard but you and then I'll go somewhere with like my cousin or something who just got his beat machine and this. Right, in the right. studio, we might be in a home studio, just a little mic right here. Uh -huh. So I like to switch it up because you get different ideas, you yeah. get different um, vibes. sounds, vibes from different places and different people every time. Yeah. So the second album is called Centralia Love. Centralia Love. Is yeah. that? No, it's not out yet. Um, but we expecting a date song? Um, it was supposed to be at the end of this month, but I don't like the artwork. So I, uh, it's all right, you gotta yeah. right. Yeah. Like yeah, yeah, I switched it, I switched it because I, I was banking on the fact that it was gonna be what I wanted and it wasn't, but <clears throat> I got the name Centralia Love uh, from this city in Pennsylvania. <clears throat> it's called Centralia. A lot of people don't know about it, but it was a, a city that actually burned down to the ground, and it's still burning to this day. Um, it was what? an old coal mining city in Pennsylvania. Uh -huh. And I guess uh, it was something like a trash fire or a bush fire or something started <clears throat> in a hole <clears throat> that was actually a pocket that led down into the coal mine. Mm. And what happened was the entire coal mine mm. ended up catching on fire. Wow. And the entire city was built above the coal mine. So the entire city burned down. And still to this day, it's burning. I think it's still burning for another 300 years or something like that. Cause it's like, no. Oh, yeah, in Pennsylvania. Yeah, in Pennsylvania. So it's on fire right now. Right. Well, I mean, it's not engulfed in flames, but there is it's underneath. It's sizzling. It's like, yeah, like so you can't live there because basically the whole city is built on a coal mine, and the coal, all the coal underneath the, the ground is on fire still to this day. So they don't, they don't know it's <laughs> like, what? Well, no, I mean, they, you know, you know how it is, like, yeah. humans are pretty stupid. Like, we learn, we learn <laughs> from trial and error. That's right, what right, it right. is. I mean, if you think about even modern medicine, I mean, people, there was stuff that was considered medicine back in the day that's now considered bad for you. <laughs> you know? So that's right. like kind of a second. Don't you hate seeing them, uh, commercials where they tell you this is the pill that can cure this, blah, blah, blah. But, yeah. But, like, at the very end, if you have symptoms of this and the or exactly. yeah. call. Fast, real fast. Don't call us, call 911. <laughs> okay, so with the okay, so with the incident with the city and thing, you said it's love. So like what are you saying looks like a Yeah. Um yeah, so I'll put some trade and then love because I'm just like that's I kind of figure this album I want it to be something meaningful like i told you like the first one was just like some party and like just lit music everybody yeah. was turned up to and then with this one i just wanted to be more like yo i want this album to be what century it was yeah. but you know a lot of it is real music right. like, like passionate music love music like dance feel good music right, you know right. what i'm saying so that I wanted to be some music that burns in the hearts of people forever, you know what I mean? Yeah. So that's kinda like what I what I took from that because oh, wow. I, I was I was infatuated with that place after I found out about it. Yeah, I'm gonna take a look. I'm gonna check it out. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. And I went there and it's so cool because you can actually go there and look I mean they got four highways that are just abandoned. So, so you can just imagine like just walking out and you're seeing like a whole big, uh, street yeah. that's abandoned. Like, so the people didn't live, they just... No, like, everyone was forced to evacuate. Okay. So you got some homes that are still up, but it's like, you know, everything yeah. is just run down and like, 
It looks like a ghost town. So is it hot? Like that? Like yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I mean, underneath the, the concrete is literally breaking. Like all the concrete is broken. Like it was, it was bad. Like I think two hundred and some homes all burned down, and then, like everybody else was forced to move out. What? That yeah. is crazy. Yeah, it was wild. Wow. Like real crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was wild. Look, three hundred years being burned. Yeah, because it's. The, the coincidence was it was actually the coal that they were mining there was valuable because it was the slowest burning coals <laughs> that you can find. Oh, right. <laughs> Why would they build coals under the city any damn way? Well, no, it was a coal mine. So, oh, okay, okay. so okay. you know, when, you, okay. when you're digging down, like, you know, when you're digging in the coal mine, you're digging, you digging, you, first down. you dig down, Turn then you're digging like this, right? Yeah. You're digging out. So what happened was, it's nothing but coal above, below. When you're down there, there's nothing but coal everywhere. But it was an actual fire above ground that Went down was the connected hole. to the coal mine. And they didn't know. So Somebody, somebody sued for that? That was bad. I think it was back in like the... This, this, this fire started in like the 50s or the 40s. <laughs> it's still oh, burning to that day. It started a long time ago. So they haven't even did any industrialist? Yeah. No, it was, it was done. Oh, wow. so, I'm sure there was somebody that was to blame for it, but he probably just. So. He just skipped town like, I'm out of here. Yeah. 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 Like, 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 I'm sure you ain't no firefighter, no. Especially, yeah. but like, I mean, like, I know there's people that's watching that want to ask the same dumb ass question. Like, it's no, ain't no water kids. Wait, I'm trying to because right? it's, it's different with even like the the wildfires in California like that's leaves and shit like yeah. this is cold like we all know what cold like, was like, charcoal. yeah like charcoal like but this is the raw form of that like it's gonna burn forever like, man like that's just sizzling yeah exactly like sizzling. all it needed was just a one little flame like I mean we probably good for barbecue down there he probably so, be, <laughs> throw some ribs down in that hole you know <laughs> Is you working on any movies? Uh, or, or I mean, like, what, what are future projects? Um, yeah, well, okay, there. so shout out to Christina Cooper. Um, uh, phenomenal young black female director, producer, who's like killing it right now. She just, uh, um, we did a movie called Loyalty. Um, and then we're also doing one called South Central Love, which she um, produced and wrote. And uh, we got another project that's coming out as well that I wrote that I can't really drop too much information on, but um, I've just been working with people like this right now mm -hmm. on some just grassroots kidney, you know what I'm saying, yeah. ourselves, because there's so many of us that have the resources and the connections to go, look, like we sick of, I mean, a lot of us are kind of sick of auditioning for right. these roles that we can't get, right. you know? Like, I mean, it's, it's mind-blowing to me sometimes some of the auditions that they'll send you out on knowing, like, you're not about, you know what I mean? Yeah. You're not about to cast me for this, like, you know what I'm saying? I'm right. not Thor, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you can't send me on a Thor audition and really expect me to be in here, yeah. like, I'm Thor! And hope <laughs> to get it, like, you know what I'm saying? So, like, for me, what we've been doing is we've been putting, together a team of people that's like, look, you got projects that you want to do. I got a project that I want to do. My boy Malcolm Kelly, he um, played Lil' Saint. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay, the, okay. Like, all Saint. The, yeah, he was in Lost and a bunch of other TV shows and stuff as well. But, do for Saint. Yeah, we all have our, you know, our projects that we want to do. So what we've what we done like the past couple of years is we'll focus on each other's stuff. So like, what's up, like, look, if you need me for yours, I'll be there for yours. You just be here for mine, and then I'll be here for yours. Oh, you need my cameraman? Okay, cool. I'll let you use my camera guy and his cameras. Let me use your sound guy on my project. So what we've been doing is... That's so good. Yeah, we've been keeping it kind of like that because at the end of the day, it's like we're better off producing our own content and putting it out there because we don't know what our fans will like. We don't know what might catch, what might be the next thing. I mean... I, I even look at movies like Snow on the Bluff, right? Right. Like, a lot of people look at that as like bad, but I looked at that as something that was so good for our, for just for young people, 
in general of like what that was was more than just that movie. You right. know what I mean? Like I looked at that as like the fact that this shit is on Netflix right now is like blowing my mind. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm like, because it was not only shot full gorilla style, but like it was also tapped in on some stuff that was like Great no, no. A lot of people don't know about this. I got to check it out. What's the name of it? Snow and the Bird? I don't even think it's the you know Netflix report. I, I probably have, but I don't think so. Man, Snow but Curtis Snow, Curtis Snow. Curtis Snow. Oh, no. If you see it, you'll know. We can watch it while, uh, 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 on like lunch and shit. I'm yeah, we can watch it like for sure. Have you ever really seen that? For sure, for sure. For sure. Like, but it's really like a movie that, for me, it was for the culture. Because I was looking at it like, yo, is this really happening right now? Like, right. Am I really watching this on Netflix? Like, what's going on? And I mean, for me, I looked at it as, I mean, not, not just motivation for me, but I looked at it as like any young movie producer or director, you know who wants to be one, mm -hmm. you can look at this movie and be like, hey. You have no excuses. You have no excuses. <laughs> like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? You just gotta go out there and shoot it. And, and that's what I learned from, you know, people like Spike Lee and all those guys who like, just go out there and shoot it. Mm -hmm. you, you're, you're half the battle is going out there and doing it yourself. And once it's done, I mean, it's done. You it's got done. vision. You can go out and you. Get it. You know somebody else who had a movie that was genius to me that was kind of like in the current Marlon Wayans' uh, Haunted House. Like yeah. that movie is really shot in like vlog style, and like, everybody wants to vlog. Like it's really like like he was shooting it with the cameras that, that like the cameras that uh, be up in uh, the, yeah. the house and vlogging with the camera. The whole yeah. movie is shot just like that. Yeah. Well, you know. The Paranormal Activity, um, the original movie, the, it was a husband and, or, or a girlfriend or boyfriend who made the original movie. And they still to this day have the largest uh, ROI, return on investment, yeah. for of any, any uh, art form, media, period. Not just movies, but like music, movies, anything. They spent, I think it was 15 to 20,000 oh, wow. <clears throat> on this movie that they filmed at their house, like, you know what I'm saying, with their handheld camera. And then the movie made like 109 or 190 million dollars on that. Paranormal Activity. I didn't know that. Yeah, the first one, it was like, it was under, I know it was under 50,000 or something like that. I think it was like 20, 15 to 20,000 that they spent on making the film. And they made 100 million dollars. Hey, that one. Yeah, so you just imagine, they have made like, nine different Paranormal Activities since then, I think. I don't even know how many, but I know it's yeah. a lot. But it's this is the generation. Like our generation is the generation of we don't need the big distributors to make films. We right. don't need we don't need a really blockbuster, you know what I'm saying, Shoot budget to, to make a movie. I mean as long as you know how to edit or you got an editor or someone that can put the movie together for you, you got a good storyline, you can get some people that's gonna support it. Right. And nowadays people like finished products, so that's what we were working on, just producing it ourselves. Just give it out. Yeah, that's, that's, I mean, then you have to be like, the people that you work with, make sure that they know what they're doing too, because it's like, like you said, get people to know how to edit people, because if you're good at what you do, and you don't necessarily have a huge name for yourself, yeah. I mean, you still can give people a chance, and it's like, you know, y'all all come together, but I, I love the fact that you're using the people around you already to kind of, you know, y'all feed off each other and yeah. build an empire versus trying to, like you said, go to these um, auditions and it's like, now you know that. Yeah, take a village to raise a child. I mean, we, we look at it like, I mean, we did that all the time on like how many, <clears throat> how many auditions we would go on a week, how many acting coaches and acting sessions where you're doing like two hours with this acting coach. An hour with this one. You're doing two hours with this guy for this role. An hour with this guy for this role. Then you gotta go to the, drive to the audition. Then, okay, you might get a call back. Then you gotta come back the next day. So it's like, the same amount of time that we spent doing all this, we could've been filming and uh -huh. had nothing but content this whole time. See what I'm saying? Like, if we were spending two hours with the uh, acting coach and then an hour practicing and then an hour you know, filming or going to and from auditions, that's five hours that we could have been on mm -hmm. set. You know, and we got cameras, we got a sound guy, so mm -hmm. that five hours could be anywhere. We could be at a, a liquor store shooting a scene, we could be at the parking lot shooting yeah. another scene, we could be over here and we just did four scenes, five scenes in five hours. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Versus 
That's sitting up here hoping, like, oh, let me see if he picks me. Like, I don't know if they're going to pick me today. But they really love me. Like, you know, <laughs> we really loved you, though, Chris. But you're not in this movie. Like, you know? They always should have sued you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what? I mean, we're in, the, we're in the industry of being chosen, right? So it's, it's different. It's different in our field of, like, anything else. Like, most other films, I mean, even, like, an editor or even a producer or director, right. you can kind of be more on your, your resume can kind of speak for itself, right? right? So like you're an editor and you edited for Game of Thrones and you edited for, for um, you know, whatever, oh, right. Right. any other, right. or The Sopranos, okay, once your resume comes over someone's desk, they're almost 99% of the chance they're going to make sure they get you on their movie. Yeah. Because you did Game of Thrones and you mm -hmm. did, you know, The Sopranos. <laughs> yeah, but when you're an actor, it's kind of more like, okay, well, oh yeah, we like your resume, but we okay. feel like this guy's a little bit taller or he looks more like the dad who plays the dad in this movie, so we're going to pick him because he's lighter. Right. Or we like the way his hair sticks up and is poofy, so mm -hmm. you, you audition better, but we like his hair. So we're gonna pick him. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it, it go like that sometimes. Like they'll literally tell you, like, well, I mean, they'll tell you straight up, like, you didn't audition well, but we liked your look, so we picked you. Yeah. <laughs> so like, all right, man. Between two industries, which one will be? Which one gave you the more headache to to music? The music for sure. Yeah, more music. than more than movies. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Well, because. I mean, the one thing I do love about movie making or just TV shows in general is like, even when I did The Quad, like I did an episode of The Quad on BT down here in Atlanta, um, and that's like, you, no matter what, you can always fall back into, you know, the set life, and, and it's easy, you know what I'm saying? You, it's, it's straightforward, is what I like about the acting and the, produce, and the movie side, mm -hmm. it's because no matter what, you know what your role is, Right. You know who you're playing. You know how much you're getting paid. You know how long you're gonna be on set. With music, everything yeah, is just a gray. Everything's a gray area. Right? Yeah. <laughs> the whole industry is like you don't know what. Like you might have this song, and you know, let's say you get a song to Chris Brown. Okay, like Chris Brown says, "Oh, I love this song." He wants to do this song, but here's the thing: you have not way on. Whether Chris Brown wants to release that song, or whether it's gonna even make it on an album, that might be right. his favorite song today. You know what I'm saying? But then yeah. three weeks from now, he might he might record 50 new songs. You know what I'm saying? And be like, oh, this the one. These two are the one now. I'm gonna do this thing. I'm gonna do this. Right. So yeah. you're you're always waiting on someone else or, else or a producer or yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, we can't get the video done in time, so we're gonna scratch that one off the album or. Oh, we can't, um, the label don't like the song, but everybody else like it. Like, what? <laughs> Who cares what the label like? If you like the song, you know what right. I'm saying? But it don't matter. It's like, yeah, like it. it's so many different levels of bullshit that you just kind of like. I do music because I love music. You know what I'm saying? It's not more so about the business side of music. It's more like just I just love doing it. And yeah. I love making music. So my my time of whatever happens in, in my stuff will just happen. Like it's like okay. This person wants this song, that's cool. They don't, it's fine. Like, I don't care. Because either way, if you don't, I'm a person like kind of awesome, how Kanye used to be like, if you don't like it, I'm just going to put it out. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> straight like that. Like, if you don't like it, it's going on my album. Perfect. Like, yeah. you're not going to hurt my feelings by saying, like, you don't like yeah. it or your, album, your label won't let you use it. Yeah. So, so I have one last question before we hop into this break. Okay. When you say you do other music besides rap, like, do you really like, I mean, like, really like, I mean, like, is it like really like art, like a CeeLo Green type, type of movie? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. I'm, I mean, I'm gonna, like, I'm gonna be looking up. Yeah, no, I, I mean, yeah. I even play out some stuff before I leave, but um, for me, I listen to all genres of music. I do too. So I have a different ear for when a producer, like, let's say I'm in a studio and a producer plays me a track and that's like, straight guitars and like slow something like most rappers or you know say you're just a rapper you're gonna be like skip 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 but me i'm for one i'm not a person that just puts something on every beat right so like i'm not one of those guys. like 
who just freestyle on every single beat that's played. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like me, it has to do something for me for me to make a, a hit or something mm-hmm. off of it. So like if I hear it and I'm like, yo, this is crazy. Like I'm, right, I'm right. nine times out of ten gonna put something on that that day. You know? Yeah. But I mean, that's another reason why I like that little Nas situation that happened with him, right? Mm-hmm. He did something for the culture because what he did was he showed people exactly what I've been trying to show people for a long time is especially country music is one of the easiest music to do for us, our people. Mm-hmm. It's very easy. Right? I don't know. Do you remember? Oh my God, I'm gonna blank on his name. But do you remember that song? His name was. Um, is it Black Lives Matter? Tell me something. Uh, it wasn't even a country song. It was. It was. It was like considered a country song, but it wasn't. His name was Doby. Uh, something Doby is gonna come to me in a minute. Dobie. But he made that song that um, Train we did. Give me the beat, boys, and be my song. I want to be rocking and rolling. I don't. How's a black man that made that song, right? Really? Oh, I yeah. didn't know that. No, exactly. Nobody did, right? What Lil Nas did this year is what that man did in the 70s, in the 80s, I think it was the 80s. Dolby Gray, that's the name. Dolby Gray. I gotta listen to that song. Yes, yeah. and when you look at that, you gotta look at the picture of him though, it's cold. Like, he's like, he's a real black man, like, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and that's what even people back in the day, like, um, what's his name, Barry? Chuck Berry, mm-hmm. they were making music that was universally sound. But people didn't know who was making it. I mean, you had Chuck Berry was pulling up to perform at places, and they were saying, "No niggas are allowed here. What are you doing here?" He's like, "I'm on the flyer," and they was like, "What? Right. You you're not Chuck Berry? Like, yes, I am." Like, you know what I'm saying? And that was but that's the cool thing that's about crazy. music. Like even that exactly. song. Um, yeah. What's that song? And it was like. Um, don't listen to what people say. I knew that was a white dude. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, uh, John, that's a John Lee. When, I, when yeah. I seen that on Twitter, I was like, what? I mean, because like, he has some soul. You I know what I'm saying? I feel like, 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 like John B. Oh, yeah. He's mixed, though. He mixed. He, 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 he mixed. He's like, 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 that's what but I that's thought. the power of music, and yeah. that's the thing that people don't understand. Like when all these white people were getting mad, well, you know, I mean, it's not all white people. Let me just clarify that. But you know, <laughs> those people are getting mad that he was like a wrangler when he had the wrangler jeans. Wrangler on my boobs, man. Yeah, like that was crazy because you're looking at it, it's like you love this song before you found out who made the song. All right. right? Then when you found out who made the song, you had an opinion about it in a negative light, but after you've already fell in love with the song. So it was like, his song was number one on the country charts. They realized he was a young black kid, Mm -hmm. and then they took it off the country charts, saying this this doesn't qualify as a country song. Then he goes and gets Billy Ray Cyrus, who is my man for life. I love Billy Ray Miley. Shout out to Miley and Billy Ray Cyrus. Went and got Billy Ray Cyrus on the song, Mm -hmm. and then song went number one again. Right? Now, and if that's not a, like a slap in the face of like, it wasn't not a good song before that, or what? Like what happened? It was a good. It made it all the way up in the charts, and then you saw who it was. Like whoa, 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 stop! Take that back. And then it was like, oh, he got Billy Ray on it. Nah, 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 nah. bring it back, bring it back. <laughs> but I'm, I salute him, and I salute Billy Ray for having a number one again too. Like, yeah. just like when I see that, that song, you could just vibe. Yeah. Do you see the video, and it's like, yeah. yeah. Riding that rodeo in my Maserati Sports car. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, I, I, that Dolby Gray song, that give me the beat, boys, when I trained, made that song when I was growing up, you know what I'm saying? It was probably like, I was like 15 or something like that, 16, and redid it. Right. And I always thought it was their song. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So like, I used to always play that version. And then I think it was my dad who was like, Man, that's an old song. I was mean, yeah. I mean, hearing that song when I was a kid, when I was younger. I was like, what? I was like, no, you didn't. Like, yeah. And then he played me the original, the original one. I'm like, this one better than that song. <laughs> <laughs> that shit ain't hard. Like, and I'm thinking, like, wow, this is what he told me that. And he told me the story about with that guy, how he put the song out, everybody loved it, 
And then when he performed, all these, you know, the, the yeah. secret racists would come out and be like, wait a minute, who, 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 who is this nigga in here with that? Who's this nigga with that? That poop is out for up here, up here, singing his heart out. Like, that's not him saying that song. Because if you hear it, there's no way you can tell me that the guy is black or white. You couldn't. Right. I couldn't. I couldn't even tell you. You couldn't you tell. Bro, like. it's the craziest stuff ever because music is profound. It's like no matter what, it's in your heart. So you done heard the song. It's number one language. Time and time again, and now it's your favorite song. Mm -hmm. But then when you find out who did it, you can you can only either say, well, I guess I like this black guy, or <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or, yeah. Or, yeah. <laughs> he's cool <laughs> because. Uh, this is my favorite song now. Right? He is the exception. Yeah, he's like, the exception. Yeah, you know. <laughs> okay, y'all, we gotta go into a quick break. And then. we'll be back. He's always looking like the guy's thirsty, like, oh God. It ain't even the cave. Yeah, it's like sometimes we just be chilling. Be chilling. Yeah, sometimes we just be chilling and some girl like, my friend wanna talk to you. No, I'm good. I'm I'm I ain't I'm trying to like nobody fuck right yeah, now. I'm, to, I'm taking a break. I'm mine, I'm talking about mine. Like women gotta understand that when girls see us being good, being faithful, getting money, they wanna latch on. Yeah, and they don't understand that <laughs> these girls wanna post. They do this, my man. This my oh, oh he taking me to Bora Bora. Oh my man. This, oh, all you're doing is having some other girl mounting up. Like I'm gonna take her. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna yeah. see what I can do. What? I'm trying to throw. I'm gonna slide his DMs. Like no, like. That's why, I, with me, I'm more like private as far as like, because it works, I mean, I'm gonna be honest, like it works the same way even with, with guys, like, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes, like, if you got a beautiful girl and you post her all the time and your, your homies or your- Bitch, you're afraid. Well, he's not whoa. Yeah. Like, well, how does that follow yeah, up? Yeah, yeah, like, I'm thinking like a lot of your pictures right now, like, yeah, that's like. No, that, that's weird. I never understood that. I post my boyfriend, people from my, not. Really. But if I was to post my boyfriend, people I went to high school with start following him, and there's no correlation. I'm like, what? Yeah, exactly. Look, that was because they plot. They plot. <laughs> They're like, oh, she got her a little cute. <laughs> I, I did um, on Instagram. I put my foot in my dad's slides, and I, I took a picture, and I was like, um, I was like, um, my boyfriend feet so big. When I tell you, my DMs was like, what? Uh -huh. Ooh, like, and I'm like, nah, I'm just kidding. It's like, but y'all over here finna have a heart attack, but y'all not even trying to take on the throne. Like, y'all just mm -hmm. mad. We just need to know you're available exactly. way this time. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, you know what I'm saying? Anything, you want to make sure them J's ain't sold out. You yeah. Know what I'm <laughs> Y'all got it? All right, baby, baby, I'm not being there Friday. <laughs> so, as you want to close my with uh, Yeah, let's, uh, let's, let's get power to the question. question. Power question. Okay. Other, Jay, let's get to it. You made that logo? Uh, I didn't, um, but my guy, who made it? Um, mm, I can't even think of his name right now, but shout out to him who makes Stephen Gray logo in the process. <laughs> Turn <laughs> yourself right underneath there. <laughs> Shout out to him. <laughs> yeah, um, oh yeah. Question. What's the meaning of life in one word? Wow, I got a song called Meaning of Life. Let's go. Everybody we talked to has like encountered our questions today, like, oh really, you're all right. right. <laughs> <laughs> um yes, sir. meaning of life. I try to, I, I mean, you gonna always have your human, right. 
you know, feelings no matter what, but I try to look at everything as a blessing, even if it's bad. Right. And exactly. I know, well, this has to be something that I'm going to be laughing about in 10 years. You know what I'm saying? Or it's got to be something I'm going to be, you know, looking back at as why I'm glad I didn't quit then. You know? Right, right. Um, but yeah, I think just perseverance, man, just staying in it, bro. It's, it's, a, it's a real marathon. Like, RIP my boy Nipsey, man. Like, For really, real. really good dude. He was a amazing person who dropped jewels on me and my brother, you know what I'm saying, even when we were with him. Um, my boy Malcolm Kelly has one of the dopest songs with Nipsey, and he never even released it. And, mm. you know, it's, it was so many different things that we learned even with him about life. But my thing is, I feel like it's really a marathon in, in a <clears throat> literal sense of, you know, you want to get to the finish line, right? Mm. So. I like, you know who Gary Vee is? Yeah. Uh, okay. so like, I love Gary Vee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's, a, he's amazing. But he he said something that I always did, even before I started really tuning in a lot of his stuff, is he always lives his life as he, it's 100 years, right? So he lives his life as though he has 70 years later, or 70 years left, or, you know, 64 years left in his life, you know? And that's how I always look at it. Because no matter what, lives can be changed in a year. Right. You know what I mean? Lives can be changed in six months. A day. So it's like you never know. Like you have to stay on the wheel. You have to stay. Every time you fall down, you have to get back up. Because in the literal sense of what it is, you keep going forward. You never know what can happen. I mean, everybody in this room right now, you could live in the next ten years. One of us could have an Oscar. One of us could be a fucking Fortune 500 company owner, or you know what I'm saying? But we don't know. Right. We can't quit today because somebody pissed you off yesterday, or somebody mm -hmm. said something to you that you go, oh, man, you want to do something that'll alter your life forever. Right. You know? And I feel like people have to <clears throat> stick with that in their head, especially us, because mm -hmm. I mean, even you know, even young black males have to go through worse than anybody else anybody, right. you know and no matter who wants to argue that that's a, a fact <laughs> you know there's, there's there's a proof in that you know and there's no matter what we make it through the fire every day so we have the ability to hop back up and keep going you mm -hmm. know and that is what life is about to me is just perseverance and not letting nothing stop, stop you i mean you look at jay-z this man is a billionaire he went from mm -hmm. the projects Section 8, welfare, right, you know what I'm saying, to a like billionaire, you know what I mean? So, at, at, at the age of 49. Exactly, at the age of 49. So imagine if he had quit any time somebody told him, you suck at being a rapper, or, or if he had just quit when somebody, you know, took his girl, or <laughs> whatever. whatever. Any, yeah. Anything that could have happened along the way, that's what it is all about, especially for us, because we have that gene. That's in us, you know what I'm saying? I mean, right. we don't, we're not here by accident, you know? Yeah, right. Six, I mean, 500 years of oppression and we survived through that, living under substandard conditions to be where we are right now, to have more than what we need to succeed. Right. <clears throat> it used to be a crime for us to read, and now we're Reading. speaking and talking, talking and reading, reading yeah. and doing everything. So, we got the ability to do it. I got a song called Black Boy in Danger. That's what we dropped this morning. You got to listen to that one. Man, I'm so proud. Some, some deep stuff. We got gifts for you. We what? got gifts. We got a pair of gifts. <clears throat> I love gifts. Before we get out of here, man, um, okay, I know you're on social media, so like you see how these young kids are, right? So like they feel like bullying, and every time somebody fight, like, they pull out their phone to yeah. And, and like they think it's cool, like they think it's popular, right? Yeah. So this is a friend of mine who got a clothing line called Fuck Pop You For sure. And it's basically saying fuck stupid stuff. You know what yeah. I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Like it's an eye catchy name and I don't know, this large. Uh you want larger or medium? Uh definitely large. Oh yeah, hell yeah. Appreciate it, bro. And like I wanna give you a hat, but we got two more females coming like this. Oh, yeah, no, that's Oh, definitely. Appreciate it, bro. Yes, sir, man. Oh, man. Yeah, be an individual, man. Put that popularity shit. Hey, you said it right down here. Because <laughs> that popularity shit is get you nowhere. Yeah, man. I think I'm about to uh, uh, quote you on that one, man. <laughs> yeah, for real. <laughs> <laughs> for real 
I mean, it is. In this, this generation, it's like, I'm, I don't, I don't look at them as bad. I, I look at it as like, they just have to learn. It's going to be a different way that they got to learn. Mm -hmm. Whatever it is, I don't. I mean, it's hard trying to, it's hard trying to tell kids who are still in school that popularity doesn't matter. Because like, even, That's how like, school. getting out of, the, yeah, high school and college, like, when you graduate high school and stuff, like, even in college, like, it don't matter, like, you in the real world, nobody cares who you hang out with in the but you can't preach that to somebody who has to go to school every single day and be like, oh. Well, we also have to look at it as it's not the same school that we went to. You could, you could fight somebody at school and go back to school the next day and whoever saw it was the people that saw it. Yeah. Nowadays, your fight gonna be a world star. World star. Or your world star. <laughs> don't get beat up. Like, yeah, exactly. Don't, don't get beat up. Like, you get knocked out of your fourth, fourth period class. Everybody will never be in that unit. That will live on until you move out of yeah. your unit. <laughs> you ain't at the rest of your life. You might come back for a class with you. Remember that video that went around? Right. They still got it. They still got it. They still got it. You know what I'm saying? There's a different respect. <laughs> <laughs> so make sure you just be an individual, man. Yeah. Be you, man. man. Be an individual, man. Straight up. Man. And my brother, thank you for coming through. Appreciate you, man. It was a great interview. Yeah, hey, appreciate it, man. Appreciate y'all having me. Everybody got to eat. Everybody got to eat. Yeah.